If you're a toy collector and have been around for any period of time, you most likely have seen incredible promo shots of the figures you purchase or want to purchase that look like this, this, or this. And you're going to be thinking to yourself, you know, these look pretty cool, but how in the world were they made? Well, dear viewer, I have a treat for you. Today, not only are the images that you just saw my own photos, but I'm going to tell you how to step by step take some of these incredible photos such as this very photo. Because, as I've said multiple times, toy photography is how big kids play with their toys. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. The best part of today's show is that I'm going to show you how to take a photo of this figure right here, Batman, as voted upon by you, and ultimately turn it into a high quality promo shot like this. And before you check out or click away thinking that you don't have the skills or the equipment, well, even better news is that I'm going to show you how to take this very photo with a camera and a phone. But wait, there's more. Still think this video is not worth your time? Well, let me do you one better. Let's say you don't have the fancy lights or don't want them. I'm gonna show you how you can take this simple photo right here and make it look like a million bucks using only your window, something I'm pretty sure everyone has at their disposal. So now that all the excuses are out of the way of why you can't, let's start focusing on how you can. But before you start snapping, let me give you a brief bit of education because understanding how your photos are captured and created is going to only make your experience and ultimately your final photo that much better. If you have a camera or you have dabbled in photography at all, there are three main pillars that make up a photo and its quality. And I'm going to give them to you as simple as I can in around 60 seconds. So the first one is called ISO. In very basic terms, ISO is simply a camera setting that will brighten or darken a photo. And there usually is a switch or button that you mess with on your camera to adjust it. As you increase your ISO number, as you can see here, your photos will grow progressively brighter. For that reason, ISO can help you capture images in darker environments, such as indoors, like what we are going to do. The next thing is shutter speed. We could get real complicated if we wanted, but essentially it's how long your camera spends taking the actual photo. Now, this has some important effects on how your images will ultimately appear. When it comes to shutter speed, this most often has to deal with objects that are in motion, but the, for the toys that we are photographing, they don't move. At least I hope. We toys can see everything. So shutter speed for us comes into play in low light conditions. You may often see a photo become grainy. Think of photos like this. Yes, that is me and a story for another time. But this means that there is insufficient light to get a clean shot. In such situations, the lower your shutter speed, the more light you'll let in, and hence the better your image quality. All that to say, you should use as low a shutter speed as possible, as long as you can still get everything that you want in your subject or figure to be sufficiently sharp. And finally, aperture is the third and final pillar. And of the three, aperture is certainly the most important for what we are trying to do. Aperture can add dimension to your photos by controlling the depth of field, or simply put, this is what blurs the background with a beautiful shallow focus effect, which is very popular for portrait and toy photography. This is accomplished by adjusting the f-stop on your camera or phone. In your settings or lens, it's the thing that's got the f and a slash followed by a number. This can get extremely complicated like all the other parts of photography, but for simplicity, just remember, the smaller the number after the f, the more blur that you're going to have. Okay, now that we got that all out of the way, we can start getting to the fun stuff. And you may be sitting there right now with a blurry mind trying to process it all. And if that's the case, that is perfectly okay because most cameras, there's an auto feature if you do prefer to let the camera do all the heavy lifting. But if you want to be adventurous, switch that thing over to manual and let's have some fun. So now we're ready to get to the actual photo shoot. But if you're liking what you've heard so far, and this is helpful at all, make sure to give me a like on this video and double check that you are subscribed. I would certainly appreciate it. As you may have noticed already in the description, there are timestamps to jump to the parts that are relevant to you. If you don't have time to watch this whole video, or if you need to reference points to come back to as you need. 
since this is, after all, the definitive guide to toy photography. Okay, now let's have some fun. Well, everyone, welcome to Kiko Studios, if you will. I went ahead and laid out everything here in my living room so that I can show you everything that we use to accomplish what we're trying to do with our toy photography, from the computer that we use for digital backgrounds, all the way down to the camera itself and the lighting, and then ultimately the figure. And yes, there's Drago over there. He's sleeping, but don't worry about him. So we'll talk about the figure in just a minute and how we chose that and the posing, but I just wanted to lay out very quickly what we're going to end up using. So this is my workhorse. This is my Nikon Z5. And everyone always asks, okay, so what camera do you use? What can you use? Well, I'm using an iPhone to record this right now, as you can see. And we'll talk about the iPhone camera in just a minute. But when it comes to my actual camera, this is the one that I use. Now, a majority of my shots will be used on this MC50. This is a macro lens, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But that's the workhorse that I use for all of these shots. Now, there is also another telescoping lens that you can also get. And this is the one that came stock on my camera. And this gives you a different type of shot, which we will look at as well. And we'll get down to that. But the most important thing, as I've said before, is going to be your lighting. And usually I use at least three when I'm doing my photographs. Now this one right here is just a real fun little piece that um, I'll turn it on here. This is just kind of like a selfie light that you can attach to your camera if you're going to take selfies or do any type of videos. And it's just USB-C powered, you charge it up and you're good to go. And I sometimes like to use this one as kind of an overhead light or an accent light, but we'll talk about that. Very, very easy to use. But if you've known my photography, you know I love my ColourPop, and that is where these Philips Hue lights come in. Now, the bulb itself is the Philips Hue, and you can change it to any color that you want, and we'll show that to you in just a second. That's where I get all my accent lights. But they're just simply in some Walmart, very cheap $10, I think, can lights, and they usually attach them to a desk or something like that. I just stand them up and use them as a balance, and that is the light that I use. I also have this one right here as another type of accent light, or if I'm trying to bounce some light off the eyes, and we'll talk about that. And it too is just USB-C powered. You can adjust the intensity. You can adjust the color, not necessarily the color, but the uh, intensity of the, uh, the heat signatures, rather. If, if you want a cool light or a warm light, you can mess with that there. So that is affixed to just a very simple little tripod that you can maneuver and that's kind of about it. That is all I use for my photos. And if you don't know, you can take great photos with even less than that. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with a camera, with the macro lens. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a telephoto lens, kind of the standard ones that you come with. And I'm gonna also show you how to do it with an iPhone. And all of that and more is coming up next. All right, so this is what we ended up going with. As I've said, this is the DX19, which I think is better proportioned than the DX12. It does have the PRS system, so you can move the eyes to get a more menacing glare. Went with him holding the Batarang, as you can see, and then a more relaxed hand. And when you pull it back, you can kind of see what we're gonna be going for. Kind of like a power pose. There's Drago in the background, as you can see, doing his thing. But overall, this is what we're gonna be working with. And as the lights dictate, as we will show, we may make a few adjustments, but let's get at it. Now, I think it's important to lay out why I use a digital background as opposed to a green screen that a lot of people like to do for their toy photography. And that simply comes from this idea of the volume made famous during the shows like The Mandalorian. And essentially all it is is just one giant computer screen that you put the actor or actress in, and it gives you a more realistic lighting set setup as opposed to just trying to cut out and really over enhance a photo. And I think you can do a little too much with a lot of Photoshop. And so I like this idea of making it a little more natural. And you can see it's just one big screen and you can see the bottom of the keyboard dock down at the bottom, which I think is funny with a little bit of icons. So all I need to do is find me a good wallpaper to help out with Batman. So I kind of started typing in a dark city wallpaper to kind of give us that moody look that we're gonna to try to encapsulate with the dark night. Now, when you're looking for wallpapers, you need to find something that's not gonna be overly distracting. Because remember, the figure is supposed to be the most important part 
of your photo, not the background. So as you kind of scroll through here, find something that fits the color that you're looking for. And I kind of like this type of color tone. And now I just need to find the right actual shot that's gonna work well with the background. It's gonna take a little bit of trial and error, but I do like this one. Um, I think it's got the colors that are right. So when you kind of get everything situated, it'll end up kind of looking like this. So I'm gonna go with this and we will see how that turns out. All right, so now that we have the background situated, let's take our photo. Well, obviously that looks a little too dark, so we are going to talk about what we're going to be using for these lights. Now, I've said before, I use Philips Hue, and it's pretty awesome if you have this as an option because I just kind of do this with my display right here. I can turn my photos on, and I've already selected everything that I have. You say, okay, well, I don't really want to use that color. Well, look, there's a big color wheel. You can change it to any color that you want. And you can see by the Batman figure, it is all changing colors. Pretty cool, right? So once you figure out what you want to do, you say, okay, I guess it's now we're ready to go, right? Well, as you can see, it's still a little too dark. So then I'm going to bring my top light right here. And this is just a simple USB-C piece. You turn it on, and this is going to give a little bit of light to the top. And you're framing kind of the head of the figure. Now you can see there's a little bit of an option there. And when you look at it, you can see that the figure is starting to come and take shape. You can now see that light at the top of the figure's head. But we're still not done. We want to add a little more extra light. So I have this extra light right here. And I'm gonna turn that on. And the whole goal is to kind of warm the face and to get a little more of the reflection from the eyes when it actually hits the camera. So this is the way that I think it's going to work. Now you can move these any way you want. I mean, whatever works best for you and what you think looks good. Now for me, there's a couple things I like to keep in mind. I wanna make sure that when I'm using my digital background, I don't have the reflection of the light mirroring in the actual wallpaper. So I wanna turn it like that. Same thing with all of these. Now when you're lighting an object, you kinda of wanna wrap it and wrap it in light. You don't want it kind of just sitting like this because you then wash out the entire piece. So you kind of frame it as an accent light. So now that we have all those lights there, you can move these back and forth, figure out what works best. I think it works good just like this. And ah, now it's starting to come alive. You can see there is light on the top shaping the figure all around. And I think we're gonna be ready to go here in just a second. All right, we're gonna be starting off with the macro lens, the MC50. And what I'm gonna to try to do is duplicate this photo with each lens. Now it's going to vary because the lens you put on will change the f-stop, it will change the ISO because each camera is going to be different or rather each lens is going to be different. So this one is the way we have it. You can adjust the ISO back and forth, the f-stop. You can see it's going up and down to figure out what's gonna work best for us. Now we're gonna kind of sit it and say, okay, that looks kind of good. Get it in focus and Snap, snap, maybe get a different angle, snap, and there you have it. So now we're going to switch the lens out and it's as simple as this, you kind of twist, and luckily for Nikons, they just kind of go just like this. So now we have the standard lens that came with my camera. This is a stock one. Now if I were to put this up, you can see it's quite a bit different already. You can go in and out as opposed to just adjusting on the macro lens. So we're gonna get this kind of as close as we can. And as you can see, we switch lenses so it's a bit darker. So we're going to brighten it up to make it more consistent with what we just did. And you can see the green and the red box letting you know when the focal point is in frame. That looks good to me. So snap, do a couple more, snap. And you can take as many as you want to get the best photo for you. I sometimes take sometimes 30 to 40 and then I find the one that works. So hopefully in there, there's something that works. All right, now it's time to use the fun phone that most everybody probably has. Not everybody has access to a camera and that's perfectly fine. So I went ahead and turned on the grid option. As you can see, there is a grid so you can kind of get the figure in the right zone. You can kind of take a look and see Hey, is it gonna be crooked or not? That's one benefit you do have here. It does have face detection, as you can see, and we're really going to use that to try to get the best quality shot that we can. Now we've done all the work already with the digital background, with the lights, so those are all the same. So when you have your phone, 
as I said, I do a kind of a, a real tight crop to kind of get that portrait look. You could switch over to portrait if you wanted. Um, that is an option. Uh, I want to try to do this a little more manual. So we're going to do it just like this. So as you can see, we have the figure in the zone. I'm going to touch the face. That way I can focus on it. And it's a little too bright. So I'm going to just literally pull down here and you can see I'm changing the exposure manually. And that's what you can do. You can go up and down all the way. Now there are some automatic settings, but as I said, I like to do this manually. So that looks good to me. Now we're going to need to crop in on this, but we will do that afterwards. So let's go ahead and take this, go just like that. That looks good to me and click and we'll see how that turns out. All right, so we have gotten a bunch of photos and now it's time to figure out which ones we want to use. So I know this may sound simple, but this is just all shot on an SD card and I'm going to plug it into my computer and I'm going to take the files off and we're going to be able to start editing them. If you shot them on your phone, you can either edit it directly on your phone, which we'll show you in just a minute, or you can airdrop it over to Photoshop and go from there. All right, now we're going to go through and pick the photos that we want to actually use. And as I said, we did do a lot of them. Now for time's sake, I am gonna speed through here and quickly pick the one that we're going to end up using, open it at Adobe Photoshop and go from there. Now inside Photoshop, you can do a bunch, but pretty much all I do is the spot healing tool. As you can see, just to get away some of the blemishes, some of the dust on the figure, and that is that. Now you can do a lot more if you wanted in Photoshop, but you know, not everyone has that. So I'm going to show you what I do. I'm gonna export this now it's all cleaned up and take it directly to my phone with a brand new app. And a lot of people can go and get this. It is free, it's called Snapseed. From here, I will crop it to the 5-4 ratio that you do need to have within Instagram and make sure that I plug that in to exactly the way it needs to be. Now within this app, you can do a lot of different things. You can rotate it to get the right look. And it also has a nice kind of AI generative effect fill, as you can see and you can just move it around and it does some auto fill all the way up to being able to provide extra borders. You can see really, really intuitive, very, very cool. Love this app. So once we got that, we got it cropped down to the way we need it to be. We can start doing the additions to the figure ultimately to make the colors pop and get the figure the way you want it to be. So we got it all lined up. Now we're going to start adding the details. I love to boost the structure. As you can see, it brings out the finer details. I like using sharpening to really make it sharp. I know it sounds a silly way to say it, but from there, I then go over here and start adjusting the brightness because for this one is specifically, we want it to be moody and dark. So we're going to boost the contrast. We're going to pull the brightness down, the ambience, the saturation you can mess with. Saturation gives you more color. If you were to reduce the saturation, it would make it a little more gray. But for this, I'm going to try to make a glow. That's kind of what we're going for, a glow, dark, moody look. And I'll apply that to all the photos that we end up doing. And then also we're gonna boost the warmth and the cool to just kind of complement the colors that we ultimately have. And from there, there's a glamour glow option. You can kind of add that on there, just a little bit of an extra filter, and it gives it a real nice effect. Finally, I go back in and give it a little more structure, a little more details. That way it really looks sharp and really looks clean. So when you start zooming in, you can see this is a really nice high res photo and it's gonna translate really well on mobile devices. Now from there, I then add a little bit of extra flair into another app called Inlight. Now I bought this a long time ago. I'm not for sure if it even works still for other people, but that's what I use to be able to add these layers. Anything that's gonna be able to add layers is exactly what you want because I like to add these smoke effects just to give it a little more depth. And I already have them saved on my phone. I've showed you this before. I download the PNG, I add it in there, just turn it into a screen, a transparency, and you adjust it from there. It's not that complicated and it really gives you a real nice dynamic to really give you a real professional feel for the photo. As you can see, it's really starting to come together. From there, I just go and add a few other little things, such as being able to boost a few of the other little parts on there. I wanna add some vignettes, as you can see right here, just to make the center of the figure, the main part, add a little bit of depth to the outside. Vignettes can really go a long way to being able to boost and make the figure look very pristine and high end. And so move some of those little pieces around and before you know it, it's really starting to come together. And the last thing I like to do, and this is completely up to you, is I do like to add my signature. 
and some people say this is silly, but I've had some of my images stolen before, and so I just add that on there, just turn the transparency all the way down, because you don't want to take away from the figure, and then just trim it out and kind of put it right behind the head, and then there it is. That is the final look, and so once you export that out, it is now time to go to Instagram, where everybody is pretty familiar with, I would think. So I add that in there, and once again, I boost the structure a little bit. I do mess around with a little bit of the shadows. I like to mess with the vignette a little bit, but structure and sharpness are the things I love to do because it really makes the figure pop on these screens. Add a little bit of a caption, letting you know that you can do it, and then if you want to add some music, that's always a plus, add some Batman music, and it really pops on the screen and really gives you a nice dynamic feel. So here is what we all have once you get them. You can see the iPhone version, the macro lens, and the long lens. Now there's a reason I decided to do this photo shoot actually down here. That is because not everyone wants to use the big fancy color lights. Did you know that there is a free light available for you? And it is right here natural light from your windows can give you some of the most dynamic lighting that you can get and it's really really nice to be able to use something like this as a kind of artificial light box to really help give you some really solid shots and all it takes is just positioning it the right way and i'll show you how that looks now i just wanted to show you kind of how easy that this is using just natural light natural backgrounds you position it within the camera the way you want obviously that's going to be personal preference and then you take the shot, and now let's take a look at some of the results. Well, there you have it. Toy Photography for Dummies, the definitive guide. How did we do? Was this helpful to you at all? Do you think this is going to up your photography game? What questions do you still have, and how can I help? As I said before, all these are shared over on my Instagram, and if you have your own Instagram, make sure to tag me on your latest photo or send me a DM and let me know how it's going because I can't wait to see what you come up with. As I said before, if you like this type of content, if it's been helpful, make sure that you give me a like, share this with somebody, subscribe to this channel, and I'll be seeing you a lot more on Instagram, I hope. And as always, in our next video.